Hey guys, I am so excited about this week's conversation on the podcast. My friend Emily McCarthy has not only built an amazing personal brand based off of her own designs, both in print and apparel, but she's also built a wonderful e-commerce business and a growing brick and mortar business in Savannah, Georgia. She's done a great job of marrying the concepts of home and gift and lifestyle together with apparel. And her apparel line sells more in coterie than say magic. So we're going to be speaking today from lots of different vantage points, from different price points to different customer bases to how to start an online or e-commerce or brick and mortar business turned personal brand and turned apparel line. Emily is not only a busy business owner, but a busy mom as well. So she'll speak about how she manages to get it all done and the lessons, the highs and the lows of her story in between. Get ready to meet my friend, Emily McCarthy today on the podcast. Let's talk about your business strategy and the juicy details of what actually works from mainstream fashion to fashion on Main Street and the entire ecosystem behind it. How do we scale your company and do it with the balance and the happiness that we all seek? Let's hear from those insiders, experts, and strategists that actually make it happen. I'm your host, Ashley Alderson from the Boutique Hub, and I can't wait to chat. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast this week. Emily, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to be here. I've listened to so many podcasts and you've you've grown such a large platform of resources for, uh, you know, boutiques and then now like now I'm designer, but I still gain so much from it. So thank you for what you do for our community. Aww. It's amazing. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I love, um, I just love the mix of conversations that we're able to have here. And I feel like what you're going to bring to the table today is such a mix of, it's not just about retail. It's not just about wholesale. It's not just about design, but it's kind of how, how do I find my own signature place in this industry that is unique to me? So I'm excited that you're going to be able to share that piece of the story today, but thank you for, for the compliment. That means a lot. Um, I want to go back. So this is the hub's 10th year in business. It's our 10th anniversary. And we've got this series on the podcast called 10 years in business. And this is your 10th year as well. And you've had yes. lots of, lots of, um, change and new opportunity and growth in your 10 years. So take me back. I love your backstory. It's very unique. Talk to me about how you got into this industry in the first place. So I really just started as a creative, um, as far as like my life goals with career and like what I wanted to go to school in. And I, you know, grew up, my grandmother was an artist and a musician. So I was surrounded by the fine arts. Um, and I knew that that's the direction I wanted to go, you know, through college. Um, in the meantime, I was always working retail. Like every job that I had, like was surrounded by retail customer experience, um, so I think that's kind of what drove my entrepreneurship to like understand owning a business, running a small business or working for a large corporation. Um, you really are kind of born with it. I think it to, to want to get into retail is like something you were just born with and you just have a passion for it. Yeah. And um, so I worked in retail the whole time going through college and majored in graphic design and, um, right out of college, uh, started working for a stationary company, designing stationary. Um, but because it was a small business, I was able to learn how to not only design the, invita the invitations and the stationary, but also print, um, package ship. And then we had a retail store there. So I was involved with those operations. Um, I then moved on to a larger, um, corporation. We had like 52 stores and it was a large like gift and stationary entertaining store. Um, and it was so much fun. I learned so much through the, you know, I always like tell people that want to start their own business, like, please go work for other people for a while because there are yeah. so many, like, don't try to do it right out of college. Like go learn whatever you can. Cause like, I didn't even realize at the time what I was learning. Like it felt like, oh, this is so hard. Like the travel, the hours, the workload. And I didn't realize yeah. in the moment the things that I was going to take away. And now I look back and I'm like, thank oh. goodness, like for those valuable years. You don't um, know what you don't know, right? No, yeah. You don't know what you don't. And, and I just, I saw my, uh, 
the last boss that I had, which was a long time ago, um, sort of recently. And she kind of gave me her stamp of approval for, you know, what's happened in my career and the store and the clothing line. And she's like, I'm just so proud of you done like such amazing things. And it's like, it's just amazing to get that endorsement from someone that you look up to and you learned from. Um, so I had a few years there and then creatively just wanted to have control over what I was designing. Um, so I started doing a little bit of freelance um, then coming from the world of personalized, I wanted to launch my own product line that was personalized products. Um, however, designing my own fonts so that I didn't just look like every other personalized website that was out there. Um, and that's my biggest takeaway or piece of advice for someone wanting to open a store or start a business is that you figure out what's going to make you different. And I yeah. think the industry, especially retail can become very saturated, um, now with online and social media. It's like, how do you stand out? Like, how do you have a different aesthetic? How do you, um, service your customers? It's different. Like, how do you like really pushing yourself to not just follow what everybody else is doing, but like really think outside the box and try to be unique. Um, and that's what started the business for me. And that's honestly what put us on the map and what grew our business and our customer base and people now know us for that. Um, so the online business grew, it was, I was just saying to you earlier, yeah. then like no one was really online. Like no one really, mm -hmm. really had a lot of online business. Um, at least not what it is now. Now I think people start an online boutique or an online store and then eventually, or like they do it the opposite way, I guess. Um, but then we started a line, then open a brick and mortar. That's what it was. So like I had a lot of friends that owned stores and they were trying to figure out like how to put their product on the website. And especially when COVID happened, a lot of the stores like did not really have a strong online business. Yeah. And that's what I think like, unfortunately the, the side effects of some of the COVID like closures and, the um, dips in business is that, you know, we had to like, I had friends texting me like, help, like, I don't know how to get my, my products online. Like, how do we shift that business? And so we kind of did it the opposite way. Of course, now you're saying you're kind of seeing an upturn in that trend again. Um, so the business just kept growing, honestly, and thankfully, and we started in my house. Now it's like the kids rooms. Uh, we moved off site for a couple years. And then Finally decided to open the brick and mortar in 2016 just to make our website come to life and give local customers a way to experience our brand in person. And that was a, it was a shift to take the website and make it an in-shop experience and mm -hmm. I guess try to capture the same essence of the website. And then our, our store really took on a few different directions over the years, just trying to fill a void for our locals. And we really, really service our locals. They're in the majority of our business now and just being a source and a place to come and, um, share memories and have fun and shop. And like, they're close with all of our staff and it's just very much a place of joy and a place in our community that, uh, we love being a part of. And, um, so yeah, so then came the clothing line, which is like well, just wait before you get into the clothing line. Let's yeah. pause for a sec. So go yeah. back to it started online, and this is when yeah. online was um, you could get a lot of traffic on social, right? Yes. So you you had momentum to grow yes. online. But I want to go from that. Thing. Yeah, and like one product we could post, and you immediately got orders for it. Like right. it was in chronological order. Like I'm just missed that so much. Oh, um, we all do. We all wish the that. algorithm would go back. I know. Yeah. Take me back though, to starting your brick and mortar. So when you started your brick and mortar, was it, it was mainly home and gift that you started in and then you brought in apparel. Talk yeah. to me about like what that was like and how you made sure the brick and mortar was successful. And, and also you're in a very historic, beautiful community. So talk to me about that as well. So we started as home and gift. That's all we had on the website. Um, I designed all the prints, all the personalized fonts. So uh, we filtered in a little bit of like existing product lines to complement. So obviously we couldn't produce everything that we wanted to do. Um, 
and also like production is a whole nother side of the conversation that I'm sure we'll get into, but, um, being able to fill a store without meeting huge minimums and things like that, we were still a very small business. And I was determined not to take on debt with opening the store. I was determined to use one part of the business to pay for another. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it takes a long time to see the positive in opening a retail store. So, I mean, the least amount of debt that we could take on was my goal. And Mm -hmm. we opened up that. So we call it that side of the store because we actually had two spaces next to each other. One side was the store and that was home and gift. And the other side was our offices and like shipping and all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we had that, the gift and home part of the store for like two and a half years. And then we had dabbled in scarves. Uh, We partnered with like a cover up company and we dropped our prints on like cute little like dock dresses and wraps. And it sort of started to peek us into fashion and our customers loved it. And we're like, okay, well, what else can we do with our prints and putting that on clothing? And it was just a world of production and design that I was like not familiar with at all, nor did I really have the sources to do it. And we also found that locally shopping was a little limited and we found that if we started carrying a few different lines that we didn't have in Savannah, our customers really started to embrace like us carrying mm-hmm. clothing as like an addition to the home and the gift shop. So we moved our offices, we expanded the store. And when we first ex- expanded the store, we didn't have our own clothes yet. Like it was a, mm-hmm. they were planted seeds and we were starting production and design, but we didn't have our own clothes in the store yet. But I knew it was coming and I knew that, launching that part of the retail store was just going to help support that, um, you know, a few months down the road. Um, so clothing did well. We, you know, expanded our customer base. People then kind of learned that we had clothing and came by just for that. Um, we wanted to get into the clothing production and just happen, you know, one of those God moments, you meet the right people at the right time. And, Um, Our production team was able to take us on and work with us on my designs and my prints and making that come to life and teaching us the process and the relationships with our factories and manufacturers. And so our clothing brand finally launched in 2019, um, which is a really fun time to see things come to life after months of working on them. We were used to a very shorter time frame where if we wanted you know, um, cheetah printed cups in the store, like we could order them and have them three weeks later. Mm -hmm. Um, but clothing is a whole nother animal. Like you're working on it months and months in advance. So, um, it takes a lot more patience and finer detail than a lot of the gift and home. Um, but it launched and it was a great launch and we, you know, took on a sales group and then COVID happened Um, luckily we're able to survive the first few months of, you know, taking on our first big delivery of inventory and trying to figure out how we were going to sell it when people were shut down. Um, we just got really creative and as we all did and made it through that. Now we're on the other side of it and we definitely learned a lot, but, um, yeah, that's kind of the story on how the brick and mortar opened though. And then the expansion, of course. Yeah. I want to go back to just um, the decision to start your own clothing line. So you'd obviously, you dabbled in just like your own private labels for for home and gift first. Um, But how do you think, like if someone's listening and they're weighing, man, should I, should I move from having my own brick and mortar, my own retail business into designing my own pieces and having my own brand? What do you think are some pros and cons or things that people need to think about and weigh before they make that decision? It, are we talking about clothing in particular or just? Yeah. Well, clothing in particular, I would say, but if you also wanted to say clothing maybe versus home and gift products, what are pros and cons? If I, I should create my own line home and gift, uh, your risk is going to be a lot lower. Um, luckily, you know, there are so many companies, um, in the U S that provide a great, like private label, um, mm-hmm. like kind of, 
they call it like um, digital printing. So you can easily drop your own artwork into a lot of different products and it allows you to take on very low inventory. Um, you lose a little bit of quality control with that, like color consistencies and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But we were able to have our own products in the store without ordering like thousands of each, say coffee mug or, yeah. um, you know, tote bag. Um, so it was kind of a great way to get into the product design without, without taking a huge risk. And if we only wanted to try six, um, say six placemats, like we can only order six, which was nice. And we could test our customer. And I think that helped us figure out who our customer was, what they were buying. Um, we learned a lot about quality control and the types of products that held up well and did not. Um, so there's a lower, a lower risk. There's mm -hmm. obviously a lower return in that also, but it's a great way to get started. Clothing is a whole nother animal, to be honest. Um, there's a lot more that goes into the clothing than gift and paper and stationery. Um, it's a, it's a big risk when it comes to minimums are going to be really high. Um, it's one thing if you're taking existing fabrics and you're having garments made with like fabrics that already exist. Mm -hmm. Um, in our case, we're designing all of our own fabrics. So we have to have like yeah. printing minimums for, um, printing our yardage. Um, our solids are all like custom colored, like everything is custom printed, um, specifically for our line. So you've got to have a certain amount of styles for fabrics, um, even within those styles, you've got to have a certain minimum, like, you know, for like one top and three different colors, we have to reach a minimum for that. Um, but it is really rewarding. It is really fun. Um, I would say when you're mass producing the clothing, your margins are obviously going to be a lot higher and you do have the room to do wholesale. Um, and I think setting your wholesale and your retails, uh, from the very beginning is, so important. It's hard to think about, well, what do you think, say this top will sell for and you set a retail, but if you're not building in a wholesale margin in there from the beginning, like you can't really yeah. go backwards. Like you've got to establish from the very beginning that you do want to expand the clothing line to like reach other retail businesses. So if you do want to manage a wholesale business and retail, like you've got to build in your margins from the from day one. Yeah, that's really good um, advice. It's got to come in your margin. And also, how are you going to differentiate how you are selling a product versus how stores who are carrying your product, how they're going to sell it, and how are each going to be successful in their own terms? Are there things you've done to help make sure your stores are successful that are carrying your products as well? Yeah, I think it, as a designer, it is hard because when we ship our product to another store, like we're hoping that they you know, really are mindful about the brand presentation, but we, mm -hmm. I mean, we get other brands too in our retail store and it, it's hard to, to know what brand story they're going to want us to tell. We, we kind of take all of these different brands and mold them together to create like our shop brand and what our customers love. And like, we kind of yeah. put our own twist to styling and pairing things. Um, and I think that's just about knowing your customer. We know a lot of our customers are moms that, you know, might want easy things for day to day. And then they want like great outfits that complement like their changes in their body. And like, whether they're in their thirties or in, you know, they're maybe even grandmothers in their sixties and seventies, like they, we know what they are going to feel confident in. Mm -hmm. And as a designer, that's, I love having my finger on the pulse of that experience that I know I can walk down there and see how our poppy top is fitting, you know, this woman in her late thirties or this sweet, one of our like sweetest little customers, she's in her seventies and she loves her poppy top. So I know like firsthand how our, our clothes are fitting and how our customers are wearing them. And I mm -hmm. think that's always going to help us obviously sell our own clothing and we try to educate stores that carry our line and we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with them at markets. Um, mm. so in our stores that I try to attend, um, as many shows as I can, I love to sit with stores and talk to them about 
how the line is selling. Like, tell me about your customer. It, it makes me do my job better and making sure that we service them also and make sure that we give them, you know, all the lifestyle photography that they can use on social media and their website, making sure our website is readily available for them to mm-hmm. copy and paste listings. And we want them to sell it as well as we do. So just like providing them with all the tools to do that. I mean, yeah. I can't tell you how many times we get a delivery from someone and it is like pulling teeth to get images from them because it's not on their website yet. And we can't get images. We can't get it online. We're having to find the fabric contents. And it's like, we don't want it to be that hard for our retailers. So we try to give them everything that they need. And I do think that makes a big difference in sales. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I wanted to give you something extra and a little special. Each Friday, I send out an email with my top tips for the week. It comes in the form of the latest on the podcast, what's new on the blog, and what do we see happening in our industry that maybe you want to be aware of too. It's called Free Friday. It's our free email list, and I just want to invite you in case you aren't already there. Please check out the link in the show notes or head to theboutiquehub.com, scroll all the way down to the footer of the website, and jump on our email list right there. I can't wait to see your inbox and you every single Friday on our email list. And I promise I will keep it juicy. No fluff allowed. We're here to grow your business. Let's go. Yeah. It has to be a true partnership. And sometimes I feel like that's missing maybe either on the retailer side or the brand side. When you think about your customers, your, your wholesale customers, um, that have been most successful with your line, what do you think those most successful stores have in common? I'm trying to think. I think they're pretty similar to our retail store. Like they're very colorful stores. They do great social media. They do try-ons. They do reels and, and posts and like they're they're like eager to get it out. Like we will like right now we started shipping our uh, March collection yesterday and it'll be tomorrow. But by the time a couple of retailers already have gotten their shipment and already are like, Oh my gosh, I need another small. We had a customer come in and she has to have it. We're like, it's going out tomorrow. Like our response time to their needs Mm -hmm. helps us sell so much more. And, and we, we feel the other end of that. when We work with other like designers that we carry. It's, like when you can't get responses and you can't get like instant answers, like you kind of lose the sale and we don't want our customers to ever feel that way that we're not supporting them selling our clothes just as much as we're supporting our own retail store. Um, And I think because we were on the other end of that for so long, like we know what we want as a, as a store and we know what kind of service and customer service that we need. Um, so we really try to provide that to our retailers and it's hands down the first thing they ever say, like when we get time at market is like, you're always so accommodating. Um, we can't make you enough. You, like my customer, she just really wanted to wear that for this party Saturday night and you guys got it right out and like it made her a whole day. I mean, and it, tra- it translates down to the customer, whether it's for for their store or it's for our brand. It's like, I still consider that in customer the the same. Um, Mm -hmm. So we're servicing them, whether it's on a retail level or a wholesale level. Yeah, that goes a long way. I want to go back to your retail store, again, starting in home and gift and then bringing in apparel. And the reason Mm -hmm. I want to talk about this is because I feel like this has become so much more common Mm-hmm. Maybe even since COVID, I feel like it's become more common. Like gift stores used to think of themselves as gift stores. Apparel <laughs> stores used to think of themselves as boutiques and apparel stores. But from my vantage point, they're really one and the same. Mm-hmm. And they really can complement one another. Um, what advice would you give to another, we'll say, a home and gift lifestyle store mm-hmm. who is interested in bringing in apparel? What do you think they need to know about that process? So I can speak on experience. We started with um, some swim cover-ups and we started with scarves and like some accessory. I think accessories definitely goes both ways and that's easier. Mm -hmm. Um, We started dabbling in some dresses because I felt like they were kind of easy to just like throw on and didn't require a lot of like styling and fitting. 
Um, and then you've got to have your dressing rooms. Like I, I've been in so many gift stores where they had clothing, but it's like, well, you can like pop in here to like the back and try it out. Like you've got to have a, a nice dressing room with great lighting and privacy and all the things like, I know it sounds so amateur, but you can't sell clothes without giving customers like the full experience and being able to try things on. Um, but I know it's like then changing some of the construction in your store, but I think if you wanted to try definitely cover ups, wraps, um, little like, we call them like little dusters or like little like shawl mm -hmm. things. Like that's always easy. Um, and then just see how it goes. Another great option is to partner with maybe a clothing line and do a trunk show. Um, mm. And you can even buy those cute like pop-up dressing rooms, but maybe start bringing in like we used to do pop-ups. I don't know if you've ever heard of Buru or you've spoken to Morgan of mm. Buru. Um, she used to come and do pop-ups. She has one of those like mobile vans and it's the cutest like shop within her van, um, the sprinters. And so she would come and set up for like two days and our customers loved it because it was another source for clothing locally. Um, so we did that for a while. We would even bring in like another local business boutique. Like we'd bring her in for a pop-up. We did a lot of pop-ups for a long time to really gauge the interest in the clothing. And it was at no risk for us. It created an event. It gave you know, the clothing line or the company exposure to, um, so that would be my biggest piece of advice. Try pop-ups and just some easy things that don't require a lot of yeah. style in the dressing room. I love that. That's good advice. What about, what about if the scenario was flipped? If you were an apparel store first and you were considering bringing in more lifestyle or home and gift, what do you think are some greatest opportunities there? If you were going to test and merge that market? So I just look at like our customer base nine times out of 10, our customers are coming in to like, they want to shop clothing, but they also need to grab like a birthday gift for their best friend, or they need to buy a housewarming gift for new neighbors. A lot of times it's like my friends were doing birthday lunch tomorrow and I need to bring a little something. So like, what is that? Is it, um, little like trinket trays? Is it tote? I think tote bags, um, like shawls and hats are always a great way to go into gift things that can be picked out as like a personal thing. Like if you're, if you're purchasing an outfit, you need matching earrings, but also like our customer mm -hmm. gives a pair of earrings as a gift all the time. So I think it's presentation is key. Like we love who hoops, we carry who hoops. And I think she does so well because her like great hoop earring comes in like the cute pink gift boxes. Mm -hmm. And it's a great little, like, treat for yourself, but also it's the easiest girlfriend gift. Um, so accessories, I think that's like the marriage between the two, um, that kind of goes hand in hand. I think getting into home when you, when you get into like home interiors, I think it's a whole, like a whole nother thing. It's case goods and, and soft goods can get a little tricky, like space wise. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got the real estate to dedicate to that, but I think accessories, um, tote bags. I think cute little like beach blankets or things like that are a great way to transition. So good. Emily, you have a lot on your plate with the store and the website and the line and the designing and all the things. And you've, your mom, you're a busy mom as well. How do you manage all these things? How do you approach a typical day and how do you approach a typical week to get it all done and still be human at the end of the day? It, it takes a village for sure. Um, we, you know, we have a staff a little over 20 and without them, like not, none of this would happen. I, and it's to say I could like disappear for a week and they would be totally fine is 100% telling the truth. They would maybe even be so glad to have me <laughs> for a couple of days. That's a big compliment. That's Ask awesome. Questions. Um, they're amazing. And um, they're here because they're passionate about mm -hmm. what we're doing and they're excited about where we're growing. Um, so staff is key. Um, I think having a good work-life balance is key, uh, getting tons of rest. Like I, I mean, I'm not one of those like stay up all night, like 
working and thinking about business, like I am out cold at like 9.30 or 10. I mean, I'm, you know, the day start early, getting the kids to school and sorry, we have this train. <laughs> it's okay. It's a long train. <laughs> it is a really long train. Um, so it's important for me to be hands on with my kids. I never want them to feel like I am, I mean, he really likes to pop that horn. Um, there's never a day that goes by. Like, I don't want them to ever think that I'm choosing work over them. I mean, they understand sometimes we've got to go by mommy's office. You know, mom's got to go out of town. Um, you know, and, it, and it's fine. And they understand that we're, you know, as a family, those are things for our family also. Um, but I try to separate, you know, get the kids to school. I'm so sorry. It's so loud. <laughs> it's totally fine. I totally get it. Uh. He's almost gone. Um, anyway, get the kids to school, come into work. I love having the quiet mornings kind of before the staff arrives. Um, and you can ask anyone at three o'clock, like I'm gone. I'm getting the kids from school. I'm taking them to all their activities and um, being present for them when they need me. And then you know, we have home life in the evening. So um, life is busy. My kids are both very, very active and have their own goals with their sports and, and things like that. And that it all requires a lot of time and energy too. So mm -hmm. thankfully, um, you know, my husband is super supportive of the business. He also has, he runs his own business as well. So things get a little tricky when it comes to like just the stress of it all. And, you know, yeah. talking through, um, it for one person that owned their own small business is one thing, but then you have both of us. So, um, we try our best to keep things grounded and not let the stresses get to us and spend the time with the kids and travel. And, um, but taking care of yourself is you have to, like, you can't let the business take you down, and, you know, take over your entire life or you're just not being the best like boss and business owner that you can be. So self-care yeah. is important. Um, I'm always a little rejuvenated when I get a little bit of time away. Even like last week, we're in Coterie uh, for the week. And even though we were showing and it was busy and it was exciting, like just being able to step out of the business for a week and not work, be working so much in it, but kind of mm -hmm. like on it and getting perspective is like so refreshing. So good. I want to go back to what you said about your staff. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think you're right. Like the fact that you can operate and walk away and do shows, which is so, I mean, if, if you aren't doing shows often, I mean, you don't know what a stress that can be to be away yeah. Um, yeah. and the energy that that takes. So go back to your staff for a minute and tell me about what do you think it is about your staff that made them cohesive and as supportive as they are? Was it your training or your onboarding or what do you think makes them special? I think that, I've just been really lucky. I think you could ask anybody here who started, like had no idea what they were getting into when they were hired. Um, a couple of them are right outside my office. They're probably giggling. But um, I think we all share the same purpose of like seeing where this goes. And we're all very excited mm -hmm. about it. And we've watched it grow every year. And I'm very candid and transparent about the growth of the business. And like, this is what we did last year. This is what we want to, and they set the goals. I'm like, what do you guys think mm -hmm. that we can do next year? And they are all really excited to have their own goals um, for the business and, and see where it goes And there. It makes it so much more rewarding for them also to see their hard work pay off. Um, yeah. And I try to hire people that are great at the things that I don't know, like, Lincoln in the next office, you went to school for fashion and teaches me things all the time about, you know, fabrications. And then we have Emma who does like helps me with print design and she's teaching me things. And, um, the retail store is a whole nother staff of, you know, um, management and production and style customer service. And, um, everybody is, is putting in their pulling their weight in their own areas. But we, we all just jump in when needed. Like we get a shipment and it's 13 pallets. Like we all show up and work out clothes and get it all dealt with. <laughs> and then we all go back to our other like tasks. You know, we're all very involved yeah. with the different parts of the business. And I think um, we love helping each other. Like if we see someone, you know, 
during Christmas season, the retail staff is like drowning. And so we're like all jumping in to help. And then they help us yeah. with, we're drowning in production. So uh, we're very much a team effort here. Um, just been really lucky. I don't know that it's like onboarding or training because I think as much as I would like to say that's a very structured program, it's not. It's like we need help or somebody like interviewed or sent in their resume. We didn't even know we needed help, but then they looked like a great candidate. So we're like, yeah, we have, we have things we need you to do. We're not really sure what that is yet, but we want you here and like we figure it out and we've just searching for the right fits for our team has been good. Yeah. It sounds like it's a culture thing. Yes. Like more than a training, you've got yeah. the right people yeah. on the bus and you can always arrange the seats. The culture's yeah. right. That so actually good. describes us perfectly. Um, <laughs> and my husband's always like, y'all are like, it's weird. You're almost like a sorority house, but you're all best friends, but y'all work together. It's like this weird, we're just, we have a lot of fun and times do get stressful and we, you know, we can tell when the other ones are coming unraveled and we just all jump in to help and it's a great culture for sure. Love that. Well, Emily, there's no doubt what you've built is pretty incredible. It's amazing to see your growth and the diversification of your growth. And, uh, this is just the beginning. There's so much more to come from here. So I just have one last question for you. And this is always the final question because I think this is the purpose, right? You've, you've built this company and it's about more than just products. It's about more than just the prints you've designed. It's about more than home gift or apparel, um, but a greater purpose. So I would love to know just 30 years down the road, you're a mom, you've got kids, they're grown and you're sitting around the front porch with grandkids and you're talking about what you've created and the life you lived. What's the thing that you really want them to remember most about who you are and how you lived? A life full of joy and just like chasing your dreams. I know that sounds like so cliche, but I just (laughs) don't want I don't want my kids or my grandkids to ever feel like they can't like reach for something that feels unattainable that, Hmm. um, I I just never think that like, no is an answer. And the staff all knows, like if someone ever tells you, no, like you're just not asking the right person, like there's a guest, you just have to figure out how to get there. And I'm just Hmm. very much believe that like someone tells us no, like production. I'm like, no, 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 we're going to figure it out. Like, I don't want, I don't take no for an answer. And I just, hope that my children, you know, learn that and that my husband and I like teach them, like, you know, he played like college baseball and he had all his goals and with athletics. And then mine has been more about like the creative and like with my business and the clothing line. And, um, but we did it and it was fun. And it, you know, the purpose of our business is to, you know, make our customers feel joyful through products and making them feel confident with our clothing and, making them feel joyful. And it's, that's on the tag of all of our pieces is to invite Mm -hmm. joy into your life. And, and you want things that are going to make you feel joyful and make you want to be joyful to others. And, um, at the end of the day, that's all you can hope for. (laughs) I love that. It's about the journey, not the destination, right? Yeah. Having joy. Yes. I love it. Well, thanks so much, Emily, for sharing your story and all the the highs, the lows, the lessons and everything in between. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope that you loved it. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a rating and review down below for a chance to be one of our featured listeners each and every week. For more information on our spirit of community over competition and how to access complete show notes and bonus downloads from our guests, head on over to theboutiquehub.com and join the community. We'll see you next week.